Wunder Parlement. L'Europe no es un mercado. Les 60 000 demandeurs d'asile. L'événement historique le plus important. Oh, in questa situazione particolare. Summit of world leaders in politics. A new... Welcome everybody. You are on Radio Ceteres and Radio MNU. And today, November 15th of 2017, we are in the European Parliament in Strasbourg during a plenary session. We have the pleasure to interview Mr. Khalil Al Amour, who comes from Palestine to give a series of conferences about the situation of the Bedouins. Yes. Um, Mr. Al Amour, uh, marhaba. marhaba. Welcome. Bien. Bienvenido. Uh, you run the center Al Huruk. Um, can you tell us what that means and what do you deal with? Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. Al Hukuk Center in Arabic means the rights center. And uh, it is when we created it uh, two years ago, is um, the main purpose was to give uh, answers and help for uh, the Bedouin community in the Negev. We have today about 220,000 people that need our legal help and advice all the time. They really face a lot of challenges and discrimination by the Israeli government, and they need this help, beside other organizations that already exist. And this is our organization. All my work there is um, a voluntary work beside my work as a teacher. Okay, so you are a la lawyer. How, with how many people do you work? Like other lawyers, or do you have like other activities, or is it mainly about rights, civil rights? It's mainly about civil rights. We have um, many challenges, but unfortunately, we don't have the capacity of uh, uh, people and uh, human uh, resources that we can answer all these challenges. Uh, we try to uh, help the people in, uh, in their uh, civil rights more, which is uh, things of uh, discrimination and uh, poor people that don't have the ways and uh, the resources to achieve their full rights. They are we are trying to, to help them. Okay. So we were wondering while preparing the interview, like, How do you manage to defend rights in a country that don't recognize your being here in this territory? Yeah, this is really a big challenge for us. We are indigenous people that predate the state. We lived there centuries and years before Israel was established in 1948. Israel don't recognize our community, the Bedouin community, as indigenous community. Uh, but uh, uh, all the world around recognize us and uh, acknowledge our uh, being uh, indigenous, like the uh, UN uh, bodies, uh, especially the Special Rapporteur for Indigenous People Rights, the mm -hmm. previous one and the current one. I met both of them, and they uh, and they recognize us and our rights. Israel don't uh, recognize us as indigenous. And not only uh, don't recognize us as indigenous people, uh, they, they treat us different, unfortunately, even though we are Israeli citizens and we hold the Israeli passport and, owner and, and citizenship, but we've been treated as second-class citizens or third-class in many cases. So there is a law, but uh, unfortunately, the law differentiates us from the Jewish uh, majority in Israel. Mm. And we need always to deal with this uh, through the court. And unfortunately, the court is not a good answer always. Not mm. everything we can go to the court, but we try. Mm. We keep trying. Um, you, the, the, the fact that you are not located on the territory and under the Palestinian Authority, um, does it help you or does it deserve... Um, It doesn't help you, or who do you get the support from, from uh, outside Palestine or from? Uh, no, it, it is not um, uh, very uh, accurate. Um, I am a Palestinian, but I am Israeli citizen, and I live under the ter uh, Israeli territory. I live in the, in yeah. the, in the Negev, and the Negev is, is, is part of the uh, of the Israeli territories, and uh, uh, control. Uh, 
But uh, unfortunately, Israel treats me as, as Palestinian, and, and uh, sometimes they forget that I am Israeli citizen uh, in, in many ways. We, we have rights, we have civil rights, we have the ID, and uh, we have the passport, and I am allowed to leave the country and come here and participate uh, in your interview now and visit the European uh, Parliament. But uh, we are um, discriminating in many fields of rights, uh, in economic rights, in social rights, in political rights. Uh, it is easy to, to, uh, to violate our rights. Uh, about uh, 200 people were killed in the last 10 years by the police and, uh, and the other uh, security forces. And no one was investigated, unfortunately. So it is only one example of, of, of what's, what's happening. But as much as they don't investigate about murders in, in Cisjordania or in the West Bank, I mean, or in Gaza. Yes, like exactly. You're in the exact same situation, unless you should sure have more rights because you're Israeli citizen. Yeah, people uh, sometimes think that we are privileged. Our uh, other Palestinian brothers in the West Bank think that we are privileged because we are Israeli citizens, so we have more rights. Uh, everything is, is, you know, relative. Uh, we, we relatively to them, we are more privileged. But uh, to the other Israeli citizens, we still second class or third class. Mm. And we need always to challenge these things by the court. So you yeah. don't you don't receive special support from the Palestinian government. No, unfortunately, the Palestinians no. in the West Bank and Gaza are very busy with their. Uh, with their threats, with their uh, res limited resources, with their uh, limited power, and, uh, and, and we don't have this contact even with them. You know, if, you can, if, you want to, if I want to visit them, I have to, to, to pass several checkpoints and barriers there. Mm. And, and, and it is more difficult for them. They cannot visit me at all. Very, very few of them have the permit to come and visit, mm -hmm. only for work, not for visiting. Hmm. Uh, so the connection and the collaboration and the, and the, uh, uh, and the, and the yes the organization with them is very very hard and always suspected if I uh, collaborate or help uh, other Palestinians I am suspected that I am going to organize a terrorist actions so yeah. <laughs> it's not even that yeah. it's very very hard yeah these are connections can you just remind us, because um, we, we are not with specialist studies, so can you remind us where are the Bedouins communities situated in the territory? Yes, the Bedouin... Where is the Negev? The Bedouin, uh, my community is uh, centered in the, in, the, in the Negev, which is the, 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 the southern part of Israel. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a desert and it's called the Negev in Hebrew and Nakab in Arabic. Mm -hmm. It is a huge area. It's about two-thirds of the, sta of the, of the state land. Mm -hmm. It's 12 million donums. We use donums. It's about 3 million acres. And unfortunately, it's, uh, even it's uh, uh, an empty area almost. 9% of all the population, Jews and Bedouins, live in this area. Mm -hmm. Israel uh, always try to uh, confiscate more and more lands in order to uh, uh, concentrate the, the Bedouin into towns. And mm -hmm. that we reject always. We don't want towns. We want the people to live their ancestral life, their traditional life, mm -hmm. uh, maintain their values, their traditions, their traditional life of herding, of uh, cultivating the land, of maintaining the land. But Israel wants to do everything to Judaize the space. Mm. Take the land and put more and more Jews in, 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 uh, in a great and wider land spaces and uh, do the opposite with the Bedouin and Arabs in general. Take maximum Bedouin and a minimum land. And this is what they do now. They built seven towns and they are trying for 30 years now to concentrate the Bedouin into these towns. Everybody who rejects the plan, they come and, re and, and demolish their house. So we have ho uh, home demolitions. We have about 800 demolitions a year. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. A country, a democratic state, the only democratic state in the Middle East, demolish houses of the people in the 21st century, in the third millennium. Unbelievable. And we have to challenge that. Mm. You were... Um Talking about like you, you, you're giving a few conferences, a series of conferences here in France, 
Um, can you tell us what, like, what you expect from these conferences? What, what you discovered when, when you came and you come and you talk with the people? Yeah, I, I, I really feel lucky here. I am surrounded with wonderful people who care and do their best to uh, expose me to this uh, this world here, to to the French public, to the French people. Mm -hmm. uh, I really feel amazed and uh, encouraged to uh, come and, and, and carry more uh, on more and more presentations. We have a successful presentation yesterday in uh, Mulhouse. And uh, tonight I am uh, in Strasbourg. I will be very happy to uh, and ready for the, another presentation for, and the questions and answers. People show a great interest in our uh, plight and our issues. Mm -hmm. And I am proud to be here. From tomorrow, we, I will continue to uh, Grenoble and Chambéry, and uh, I will give more and more presentation till uh, uh, next Sunday where I am leaving back to Tel Aviv. Good. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we wish you like much nice uh, living in France, staying in France. So for. The French auditors who live in Strasbourg. Et on va juste euh, peut-être euh, rappeler euh, que pour rencontrer euh, Rally Lalamour euh, ce soir, euh, mercredi 15 novembre 2017, rendez-vous à la maison des associations de Strasbourg à 20h, place des Orphelins, hein, pour une rencontre autour euh, de la question Les communautés bédouines ont-elles encore euh, leur place euh, dans le désert du Negev Voilà, donc rendez-vous ce soir euh, à la maison des associations de Strasbourg à 20h. Shukran. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you very Merci much for the invitation. Thank you.